Good afternoon, everyone. The Word of God says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Amen. Now, I just want to give a brief overview of how to study the Bible. As you know, I did highlight on my Instagram that I am doing Bible in a year study. And I want to introduce a video now in January so you can at least have it if you choose to join me on that journey of how to study the Bible. Honestly, that is just for leisure. That's just for my understanding. That's, for, that's just for my in-depth walk with God and to develop an even better relationship with God. But more so, my reason for studying the Bible in a year is because I just want to spend more time with God. There is comfort in the Word of God and it gives me revelation. That's how I can pull out a word to teach because it speaks to me. And if it's speaking to me, I know it's going to bless someone because the word of God truly does transform you. And oftentimes it's not what you feel comfortable with. It's when you actually go to those places that makes you uncomfortable. Someone is waiting on a word. So let's just go over this really briefly. The reason why I was encouraged to um, speak about this topic is as I was going through the book of Songs of Solomon written by Solomon King Solomon of the Bible who wrote the entire book of Proverbs and I believe Ecclesiastes he spoke about some things as it relates to marriage and I've always been writing and talking about marriage uh, I like to evangelize also about marriage but as I was in the book the Lord the Holy Spirit brought up the book of Ezekiel to me that I've spent so much time in and it's such it's there's such strong chapters in the Bible that when you're in those words and you're going through the words and you're just going through the pages and every verse you're gonna realize that you cannot be anywhere else except in the presence of God amen because they reflect the kingdom's identity. It reflects the kingdom's way, heaven's way of whatever it is that, you know, as it relates to marriage or as it relates to who God is. Because God said in his word, also in the Ten Commandments, there sh you shall have no other graven image on earth or in heaven on earth or below the earth. So therefore, the word of God does not speak to idols it, it, it is it's it's actually the opposite of anything that's a graven image or idols does that make sense now our identity does not resemble the world's identity and that's what ezekiel is trying to show of who god is it identifies with who God is according to genesis meaning you're made in his image and in his likeness amen now in marriage the husband chases after his bride because it's an image of how God pursues his children, of how Jesus pursues his bride, the church. Amen. Now, the more you listen to the word of God or the more you read the word of God, you will be captured by the power of the word of God and nothing can break that. Amen. So too many times I say, okay, let's focus on the Bible. But then the, the Bible, you cannot skip through the Bible as to based on how you want to skip through the Bible. You have to sit, focus on one verse, maybe write out the verse. Maybe start writing out all the other scriptures that comes to mind with that verse and try to remain humble before God so he can give you revelation. I was reading from my prayer book, um, 31 Days Prayers for Him, and the first chapter talks about um, the mindset of the man, and that is his mind. And I use the scripture, Isaiah 58, verse 8. And it talks about how the the um he says that in his word that his your light shall break forth like the morning your healing shall spring forth speedily your righteousness shall go before you and the glory of the lord shall be your rear guard how about that 
that scripture spoke to me so powerfully i decided to connect it with psalms 34 as i was reading it then the more i read into psalms 34 the lord brought me over to psalms 33 verse 10 because in psalms 34 it says that evil shall slay the wicked and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate it also said in psalms 33 10 therefore the lord says that he bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught he maketh the devices of the people of none effect now those are some very strong promises that god has and the more you remain in his presence what god ultimately wants you to do is to rest i could go through the entire bible study that i did by myself however the conclusion is to be still, to remain, to abide, to ask God to make you an instrument of peace, to see and visualize yourself being peaceful, to stay focused and settled and fresh, to remain careful in the temple that God has given you to to dwell and to inhabit the earth and to conquer in the earth realm because you are a spirit. Amen. Now, the Lord wants you to focus on spiritual things, not carnal things. Amen. So you have to meditate on the scriptures and through that you will remain peaceful. When you, you can pray into God so that you can ascribe strength unto his name according to Psalm 68, where you give strength to God. Because that's why the word of God says you must praise him in the sanctuary. Wake up the lion harp. Praise him the word of God says his, his praise must be on your lips amen the righteousness of God must be on your tongue your mouth was created to praise the Lord and that's why I praise the Lord so much because ultimately after reading his word he deserves to be praised so on top of just sitting and studying the bible make sure you have some praise music going make sure you have an atmosphere that can, that the holy spirit can inhabit when he comes the comforter he will bring you comfort and the word of god also says that he will comfort you on every side they're doing construction outside so i apologize for that no god is saying that greater is he in your heavenly identity the one god has given you than the devil's lies schemes that is in the world he says you can rule over the enemy because ultimately the one who is greater in you who is always God because you have to remember the devil works for God does that make sense everything was created by our sovereign God remember he says I am Alpha I am Omega I am beginning I am the end amen he reigns amen we're talking about a God who is everlasting from everlasting to everlasting he is what God there is no end to who he is that's a God who is unsearchable amen it puzzled Job remember our dear friend my dear friend Job who was puzzled because Job was always contrite before God he he, 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 he talked about it and he, he analyzed it but ultimately Job said in Job 23 10 that when he has tried me I shall come out like fine gold and I, I guess I just want to encourage someone on that today amen so when you're going into the word of god i'm just giving you an example of how to rightly divide the word of god it is true what god is saying amen and i haven't touched the new testament <laughs> but i'm just telling you how excellent the word of god is the word is to be praised the word is to be respected the word is to be reverenced that's the attitude of faith you have to have going into the word of god these days nothing can tear me away from the word of God if I'm just sitting outside I need to have my Bible around me when I'm not working I need to do what I need to do amen
now too many times you're going in with a with a misfocus you know you're misguided as to what you want from god or what you're trying to get from god you know you can't just be reading 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 without revelation you need revelation so don't be skipping the bible you know like you know it's kind of like you're in a store or when i'm in a store and i don't know what i want from the rack i be flipping from you know let's say shelf to shelf or moving through the rows of clothes but ultimately i know what i will end up getting but if what i'm seeing that is popping up before me is not resonating with my spirit then you don't want it now you would think that it's okay to just read anything but it gets frustrating right and i find that it was sort of frustrating me so i said you know i asked god i said lord you show me how to do this so that i can get maximum potential out of the word of god because the word of god is pregnant can i tell you it is so deep this thing is so real this thing is so victorious if you sit and focus on the word of god because god is about to do some amazing things don't be carried away by what you see and what looks good and what looks right some things will go down some things will go up because of where god is giving revelation and what god is doing amen so i try to focus on one thing at a time um, I use a dispensation such as my kingdom identity or um, getting revelations for marriage and how to serve my husband and I think of it when I get that revelation it's something I can gather it I can gather the information I can gather the truth of God and I can make something out of it I can create something out of it and I can do spectacular spectacular things actually with the word of God because it is he who created me so who else can I turn to except to God because God will give you all that you need to do amen now where is it that you're going to start first in the word of God which books would you start with this is what I recommend all right you always start with the book of John. Most persons would say go to Romans, but I don't see how you can go to the book of Romans without doing the book of Acts. Because without the Holy Spirit, as it was profoundly displayed in the book of Acts, you really would not understand the power of what it means to be the new creation in the book of Romans. The power of what it means to be circumcised and why grace is always abounding wherever there is trouble or wherever there is temptation or wherever there is anything that tries to take you out of God you will not really understand why God is saying there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus so after you've done John I recommend Acts I recommend Romans and then I recommend going into the Psalms going to Proverbs and remember Go back to Genesis. Amen. And I would also recommend that you finish the Gospels and just finish off the New Testament. Right. Because and also when you are doing revelations, revelations does not require interpretation. It's a vision. It's a dream. Amen. It is what it is. It's just something that's laid out on paper. It's the dream of what John saw and you you just read it as it is and you will understand because it's gonna automatically speak to you it's not something to be dread it's not something to fear it really is what will take place it's just for you to understand that it's a vision now in terms of the key points to remember when you're going through these books is one you have to remember to be very consistent, be very prayerful, and always memorize your verse. There are different ways you can remember stuff or you can memorize um, scriptures. Because since I've been going into the word of God more and I've been writing all my scriptures and breaking it down and using it in sentences, it's just like teaching English. 
um, because <laughs> I am in fact a teacher. So when you break it down and you memorize it, you realize the, oh, I can use it here. Oh, this is something I've always um, felt like I needed help with. Maybe I actually feel like maybe I bite my nails too much or maybe I don't smile very often or not that that applies to me. I smile a lot. But I'm just saying, little things, it doesn't matter what it is, don't overwork yourself or go stir up trouble where there wasn't. But you have to remember to just kindly be kind to yourself and memorize these things by just trying to apply it in real life. Apply it in real life. Actually, I find that the word of God is kind of like maths, right? You just apply it. You have to learn how to use mathematics in real life if you want to be successful. Amen. The second key point to remember is the interpretation. In Luke 12, 12, it says the Holy Spirit will give you and tell you what you are to say. If you're going to speak on the word of God, Luke 12, 12 tells you that the Holy Spirit will give you interpretation and he is an interpreter he is a counselor amen so the holy spirit will give you the interpretation plus you can pray for clarity the third point is reflecting on god's word the fourth point is it's about spending time with god alone and getting to know jesus and learning to hear god's voice it is written in the bible that my sheep hears my voice and the voice of a stranger you will not hear amen now heeding to all of these key points um i do want you to remember that psalms 139 tells you that god wants to show himself strong in how you see yourself that's really why you get to know god that's really why you you don't follow certain things and I, I don't understand, you know, meaning people, you have a choice. You have a choice about how you want to live. You have a choice about um, where you sit down or who you talk to. You have a choice. Amen. You have a choice about who you speak to or it doesn't matter, but you have a choice. So God is saying that because you have shaped your choices and you have chosen to follow my path, which is the way of Christ, according to Psalms 25, 10. Because the Lord is the way of righteousness. Because you have chosen to follow. These are the, the laws. These are my commandments that I want you to follow. And Psalms. These. Uh, let me repeat that. Because you have chosen to follow the Lord God. Who says in Psalms 25. 10 that he he is the path of life no god just wants you to dwell in him to remain in him and to know that he's your protector and he will guide you and i cannot wait to share with you some more amazing mind-blowing studies of what god has revealed to me and how he can help you because i believe that greater is using us than he was in the world amen because without god you are nothing. Amen. So therefore, thank you guys for tuning in. Remember that it, God just wants to teach you to be patient and self-control such as never, never sinning or never moving out of line with him or just always keeping your righteousness and remaining holy. Amen. Because Psalms 140 tells you, that you know god is your defender and plus isaiah 54 17 tells me that no weapon formed against me shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against me will be condemned amen so no matter what the weapon is i'm already protected amen so god bless you thank you for tuning in and please share this video with your friends with your family or anyone who would have an interest in studying the word of god through faithful women movement thank you guys i am author winsome brinkley bless your name god bless you and have a good day